Hello everybody and welcome to this new episode in where we are going to see all the REST libraries in Lumion. In the last episode, we focused on here, on this nature library. So the next one will be find detail nature. If we click twice, we will see that here we have different categories as well. We have trees and we have plants and different pages available. We have here a warning where it is said that fine detail nature objects will make your scene heavier and can slow down Lumion. We recommend using them minimally. So I recommend you just to use this geometry strategically. That means, for example, when you are composing a scene, use this fine detail nature library objects just for placing them in positions very close to the camera. Never use them massively and at the background, for example. If we jump to the next library, people and animals, we will find a large number of human beings. Here we have men in 3D, women in 3D, boys 3D, girls 3D, people 3D, static, and be careful with this, static, pets, birds, farm animals, marine life, people 3D silhouettes, Animal 3D Silhouettes, People 2D Silhouettes, and People 2D. The most important point here is to separate in our minds the concept of men in 3D, for example. When it is said 3D, I will choose this African man and I will put it here in my pavilion. This 3D movement, it means that this person will have a movement if I do a video, if I do an animation. Of course, if I'm doing just an image, we will not be able to appreciate this movement. In case we just want static images, we can find it here, people 3D static. I will pick up this Barbara, one click and then move the mouse here and I will drop this person here. As you can see, this character is not moving at all. The third option, very interesting in my opinion, lies on the silhouettes. For example, if I click here, I can choose this guy and I will put it here. With this kind of silhouettes, I can achieve more artistic effects in my final rendering. Take into account that 3D people are very difficult to render and get the impression that it is a real human being. So maybe sometimes it is better to mix your architecture with this kind of black silhouettes and get this artistic effect I was talking about before. On the other hand, a part of human beings, we will find here a lot of animals, for example here Let's go to pets and we will take this cut and we will put it, for example, let's say here in, let's say here on the roof. So I will move myself here and I will put the cut just on this surface. I will press escape and you can see here that we have our cut. If I want to move it a little bit, I could do it easily. I will move it closer to the edge of the roof and here it could be okay. Let's go now to the next library. It is called Effects. If I click twice, it will be open and we will find different categories. We have fountains, we have fire, we have smoke, we have fog and we have leaves. Of course, I recommend you as always to explore all of these libraries because it is very important if you have the knowledge about what is available for your projects. It can give you even inspiration for doing things that you haven't thought before. Going to the first option, Fontaines. Here, for example, let's choose this one, Fontaine Round 02. I will click on it and I will click here in the middle of the swimming pool. Once I have placed it, I will press escape and select. I will select my fontaine and you will see here this panel with a lot of options for editing this fontaine. We have this stream randomized option. Look what it's doing. I can control the width. I can control the angle of the stream. the size, 
the water pressure, the foaminess, and this bar for the extra color. As you can see, we have a lot of options. Take into account that not all of the fontaines have these options. For example, if I choose this one, the first one, and I will put it here, I will select, and you will see that the options here are much more shorter. So just spend some time trying different examples till you get the one you like the most. So I will delete these fontaines because I don't want them here in my scene. And we will continue to the next library. It is called Sound. Once I open this library, I will find locations, nature, things, and people. These categories represent different sounds For example, here it is click Airport Exterior Poland 001. So we are hearing right now the sound of an airport. If I move to, for example, here, Farm Roasters, I will click on it. And you can listen right now the sound of a farm. Let's go to Nature. And we will click Jungle Night. As you can see, the sound is very, very realistic. So once we want to use them in our projects, we will have just to do the same as always. I will go, for example, here. I will click on it. And look that right now, when I zoom out, the sound has disappeared. And I can see two circles. These two circles represent when the sound is gonna appear and when it's gonna become even louder. I will go to select and then you can see here at the right side this menu. Here we will be able to control the volume and the minimum and maximum distance. The minimum distance you can see that it refers to this inner circle. In the inner circle take into account that the sound is gonna be much more louder. The maximum distance, it refers to the outer cycle. And as I was saying, it is the frontier in where the sound is gonna appear. So let's put it in the minimum, this maximum distance, and let's navigate into these two cycles. So I will go down pressing the letter E. I will point my target to the sound and I'll zoom in. Look that here, when I go through this first outer circle, the green one, the sound, it appears, but in a very low level. And when I will go through the inner circle, the sound becomes much more louder. If I wanted to erase this sound, I should go to Delete and click on the little ball. Next library is called Utilities. I will click twice and here we will find just one category, Utilities, but different options. All of them are very useful, so I will take some time into explaining all of them. So, the first one is called Clip Plane. When I click on it and I move inside the viewport, you will see how this plane, this horizontal plane, is sectioning my architecture. So I will click here and I will zoom out. I will press letter Q and I will press the right bottom of the mouse to have this kind of view. As you can see here, my architecture has been cut. I'll go now to select and through the control ball of the element, I will be able to move it. Pay attention that here, it is pressed the option move horizontal. So I will have to change to move up, and then I will grab my control ball, and I will select at what height I want my section plane. If I don't want to see this section plane anymore, I could click, for example, another library and then it would disappear. If I wanted to delete it, I would click on the delete button, I would choose the utility library and then I would click here again to confirm the operation. If I go again to utilities, I will find a second option which is called grid. 
I will click on it and then I will place my grid over my ground. Look that once I have placed the grid, I will press escape and then I will go to select as always. I will click on the control button and then here in this menu, I will be able to control the scale of this grid. You have to know that 1.0 means that the distance between the lines of the grid is 1 meter. So this grid helps us for having measures into mind. I mean, with this grid right now, it is placed on the ground, we will be able to measure distance just with the eye. In case I want to make this grid bigger, then I will have to use this bar. And for example, if I put 2.0 means that right now the distance between the lines is 2 meters. If I want the grid smaller, then I will have to go here again and take into account that, for example, 0.5 means that right now the distance between the lines is 0.5 meters. So this tool can be very handy if we want to measure the space just with the eyes and place objects proportionally. Now I'm not gonna use it anymore, so I will delete it. And we will jump to the next option. Next option is called cut. Look that here we have a warning and it is said only two landscape cutters can be placed. If I click here, I will go again to my viewport and look what happened. So here what we are doing is to cut the landscape. If I could do a render right now, the green ground wouldn't be visible here in this red square. This can be useful, for example, if I go to the swimming pool, imagine that below the water we are able to see that green ground. Maybe because we don't have a surface from SketchUp like it is already drawn right now. Then instead of going again to SketchUp and draw this surface to avoid the ground being visible, I could use this tool. I could go again to cut and here I could generate this second cutter. I could go to select, I could move it freely and put it for example here and make the shape of this cutter accordingly to the swimming pool. Well, this tool is not as useful as the others, but here it is. Next option is called measure. It works in a very intuitive way, so I will click on it and when I want to measure something on my drawing, I will go there and I will say, for example, I want to measure this width of the swimming pool. So I will click here first and then here, second point, and it is set in that level 9.06 meters, the distance between those two points. If I would want to measure the angle, I could do it as well, for example, here it is saying to me that it is finding 90 degrees between that first line and this second one. Pay attention that that measure 9.06 it is already drawing in my model so I could select it here and delete it as many other things. I could click here and then it will disappear. Next option is called reflection control. I will click on here and I will read this warning. Only one reflection can be placed. So we can use just one reflection ball. I will place it, for example, here. Through this ball, I'm saying to the program, to Lumion, that I want that all the area around this reflection ball should be worked in very good detail in terms of reflections. So all the materials around with a very nice reflection, for example, this water or this glass or this metal, when I do the render, reflections will look in a very high detail way. We'll be able to see more clear the effects of this tool when we use this menu here for doing the renders. Right now, I'm gonna delete it. And we will go to the final utility, the text. I will click here and I will place the first level here. I will click select and then this menu will appear where you can arrange and edit all the things about this text. For example, here I will put, instead of this, I will write swimming pool and here I could modify this fade range, the visible range, the box style, here, look, that is not visible anymore because the visible range was too small. Here we have 
those circles again two circles the inner and the outer circle it works like with the sound the orientation style and the height I'm gonna go a little bit closer to be able to watch this level and here the orientation style you will see how it's doing and the height it works like that so very intuitive as well I will go out of this outer circle and here it's not visible anymore if I want to delete it I will click here and I will click on the control ball of course this tool is working more for videos again than for images so if we are doing for example a traveling around this building it would be nice for this video if you are finding different levels naming the part of the building at its moment so right now I will definitely erase it and with this last tool we have finished this utility library next library of Lumion is lights I will click twice and here we will find different types of lights here we have a spotlights category we have omni lights and we have area lights this light library is a very important matter and we will dedicate one specific episode in the future for having a better knowledge about it so next library will be transport inside transport you will find a lot of different vehicles like cars sport cars SUVs, vans buses trucks emergency construction boats air train and assorted so i recommend you again to explore all of this library it has no mystery it works like all the others so we will not spend more time on it next libraries are outdoors and indoors you can imagine what is going to be inside in outdoors we will find different objects related with outdoors activity for example furniture, buildings assorted lighting construction signs storage utilities waste industry and access in my opinion this library is not as good as it could be i mean many times i have found more better objects when i look on the internet than here but of course it depends on the project so it can be very useful as well here at indoors you will find again different categories sitting tables electronics and appliance kitchen food and drink lighting plumbing decoration storage assorted and utilities again the same advice if you are for example doing an interior design project and you need a very very good quality sofa i recommend you not to use the sofas from here because it is pretty sure that you will find something much better if you go to a specific library on the internet so we have already seen all the libraries this episode has come to an end and i hope to see you in the next class